this lecture that we're going to be delivering is going to be covering five specific areas. First of all, uh, we're going to be covering the time of dying and immediately after. So what should a person do if he's on his deathbed or if he has loved ones on the deathbed? Uh, and also what you're supposed to do immediately after a, a loved one passes away. Also, we'll talk about preparing the body, how the body is supposed to be prepared, what should be done, what shouldn't be done. We'll talk about the funeral prayer, the janazah prayer. We'll talk about the burial, inshallah. And also we'll talk about benefiting the dead and visiting the graveyard, etiquettes of visiting the graveyard. Uh, how can we benefit those who have passed away, loved ones who have passed away? First of all, I want to talk about the importance of this topic. At one point or another in our lives, there's going to be a stage where one of our loved ones will pass away and we may be responsible for taking care of, the, of our loved one. We'll be responsible for washing the body or you know, managing the, the affairs of the body, whether it's the washing, whether it's the burial, whether it's the shrouding, whether it's, you know, the, the deaths or the, or, or the loans that he maybe had, you know, uh, had on him. So at one point or another, we're going to be responsible, we're going to be involved, if we haven't been involved already, in a situation like this. And another important issue as well, and the reason why this topic should be covered is because, as we all know, every soul is going to taste death. And so we want our loved ones and also ourselves to have a smooth transition from this dunya into the next transition or the next phase of our, of our, of our journey, which is al-barzakh, which is in the grave. And so in order for us to have a smooth transition, a person needs to have knowledge. He needs to equip himself with this knowledge so that he's able to educate himself, educate others, and so that other people can, inshallah, also benefit. So when, when we pass away, then inshallah, there will be those who are around us from family members who will know exactly what to do, inshallah, because we educated them. And this is another thing as well. This course and this lesson isn't just something specifically for you. It's something that, inshallah, you take and you benefit others with. That's the whole benefit of, that's the whole purpose of knowledge. You don't just benefit yourself, but you benefit others as well. So that's the whole purpose, inshallah, behind this. So the first thing is what it's advised for a person to do on his deathbed and what he should be advised to do. And one of the first things at the time of dying that it's advised for the one who's on his deathbed to do is to utter the shahada, to say la ilaha illallah. And many of us, we've heard the hadith before where the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said that Prompt your dying ones to say La ilaha illallah and whoever's dying words are La ilaha illallah will enter paradise one day even if he's afflicted before that by punishment. And so this shows us the importance of uh, you know, keeping our tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah even when we're healthy. Because many of us, uh, you know, we think that it's, it's something easy. You know, sometimes I get asked a question, what about if somebody commits, com, had committed lots of sins before and he just says, La ilaha illallah, will he enter into paradise? According to this hadith, yes. Eventually, after he's held accountable for those sins which he committed and he'd be punished for those. But people are sometimes surprised. But in all reality, it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds. Because many times what tends to happen is if somebody experiences uh, you know, a, a near-death experience, the shahada isn't the first thing which, enter, which enters into his mind. You know, most of the time for Muslims, it's other words, most of the time it's words which aren't praiseworthy, that enter into his mind before he's about to have an accident, or maybe he's had the accident in a car, for example, or something else has happened. He's had, he's had an accident at work, he suffers, he suffers some severe pain all of a sudden. The, the, f the first thing in his mind isn't la ilaha illallah, but it's other words, other things that he may say. Maybe swear words or something like this. You know, maybe, we, maybe we've been through experiences where we've uh, gone through times where we thought death was close. And the first thing we say isn't la ilaha illallah. And partly that's due to the fact that we're not used to doing adhkar on a regular basis. When we're in the car, when we wake up in the morning, when we go to sleep, when we, before we eat when we're traveling and so on and so forth, it's important for us to have that habit so that when death does come to us, a person is more likely to say the shahada. So that's the first thing 
a person should be encouraged to say the shahada to say la ilaha illallah. So the second thing is general good words. General good words at the time of dying for the deceased to remind him and uh, remind those who are around the deceased to say good things. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, if you're in the presence of a sick or dying person, then you should say good things and make good supplications for verily the angels say ameen to whatever you say. So it's always encouraged to say good things, positive things, and you know, uh, console the one who's on his deathbed, console the one who's dying, as opposed to you know, making him feel anxious or stressed or you know, mentioning uh, maybe responsibilities he may have or, or things like this, because obviously, obviously sometimes those can play on one's mind and you know, he becomes anxious and stressed, unless it's something like a debt or something, which uh, we'll, we'll get to inshallah. So, Good words is also something which is encouraged for a person to remind the deceased of at that specific time. Also, number three is the dying one should be encouraged to think positively. And if he is on his deathbed, if he is about to die, he should be accepting his fate. As opposed to, you know, somebody saying, why me? Why did this have to happen to me? Why, why is this pain being inflicted upon me? You know, why am I in this state? Why am I in this situation? People around him should console him, remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remind him of saying, la ilaha illallah, you know, mention good things, so that he's in the right frame of mind. So that if he does die, you know, he's in the right frame of mind when death does come to him. Uh, number four, of the things that a person should be encouraged to say at the time of dying is that he should be in a state, scholars mention, he should be in a state between fear and between hope. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, uh, he mentioned in a hadith and this hadith, Anas radiallahu an, he, he mentions it, he narrates the hadith. He says that once the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam visited a, a dying youth, a young man who was dying. And so he asked this young man, he said, how do you find yourself? What state are you in? And so he said, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, verily I hope for the best from Allah and I fear for my sins. He said, I hope for the best from Allah. And I fear for my sins. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he said, whenever two of these come together in the, in the heart of a slave, in such a situation, Allah gives him what he hopes for and protects him from what he fears. So, you know, it's important for a person in this situation to be balanced between the two. And scholars always talked about the importance of not being too hopeful because a person may, may lose that element of fear of Allah and not being too fearful because then he may end up losing that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's about having that balance between the two. You're afraid of the punishment of Allah, but at the same time you're hopeful for his forgiveness, you're hopeful for his reward at the same time. Another thing that should be done at the time of the loved one's death or just prior to his death while he's on his deathbed is to pay off any debts which he may have. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever has wronged a Muslim brother regarding his honor or his wealth should make amends today before the day of judgment where neither dinar or dirham will be accepted. If he has righteous deeds on that day, it will be taken from them. And if he doesn't have righteous deeds, it will be taken from his companions' bad deeds and put onto him. So this shows us the importance of uh, paying off debts. And I remember... Uh, a story of uh, when I was in Medina, one of the, the brothers from the West, I think he was from the United States, uh, he passed away in a car accident, one of the students. And the brothers who were basically handling his affairs, uh, you know, after his death, they found a note in his pocket where he had written names and he had written how much he owed to each person. And this was a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. Because, you know, how many times do we uh, borrow money or people borrow money from us and, you know, we forget or we, maybe we, our intention is, is not to even pay off those debts 
you know, we borrow money from other individuals without any intention to pay it off. And we don't make a note of it at all. And then maybe sometimes they come to us later claiming that we owe them money and we don't remember. And so we deny it outright. Whereas they're the ones who are in the right. And that's why it's always important to write these kinds of things down. To, write, to make an agreement at the beginning when you borrow money to write a contract or write an agreement and have it signed so that both parties are aware of how much money is owed by the other and how much one has given to the other. The point being, brothers and sisters, that whenever we do borrow money, it should be something that we do note. It should be something we write down, something we make a note of. So that in the events that if we do die and we haven't paid them off, which is how it should be, really a person, if he has debts, he should pay them off as soon as possible. He shouldn't delay when it comes to paying debts. And this is one of the reasons why it's important to pay off debts as soon as possible. Because once a person passes away, and a person, he may die with debts on his head, but other people have no idea. And so if other people don't know, then they can't do anything about it. So in that situation, the most valuable thing are your deeds. Your wealth isn't going to make any difference anymore. So then your deeds are going to be taken away from you and given to that person who was, you know, uh, who, you, who you had borrowed money from. So this really shows us the importance of paying off debts uh, as soon as possible. And that's why I know uh, a brother who was in Medina University and he once went to eat somewhere. And he ate and he left the restaurant without paying. He completely forgot. So he left the restaurant, he went to the university, he caught a cab to the university. As soon as he got to the university, he remembered. And so he told the driver, go back, I need to pay. So he, he went all the way back to the restaurant, which was by the haram, and he went in and he paid. And the driver said to him, you can come back tomorrow, you can come back the next day, why are you going to go back right now? It's not like it's far. And he said, maybe you know, death will come to me today and I won't be able to pay it back. Like the case of the brother who passed away. And, you know, if he hadn't written those, those debts down, nobody would have, would have ever known. And his, his intention was, inshallah, to pay them off. So this shows us, brothers and sisters, the importance of paying off debts as soon as possible, not delaying them because debt can come to us tomorrow. And maybe we owe people money, but we haven't recorded them, we haven't written them down. And nobody knows about them. And then your deeds, your salah, your fasting, your charity that you gave and the reward you received, inshallah, from Allah, uh, from Allah Azza wa Jal, as a result of those good deeds, those deeds are going to be taken away from you and given to the person that you owed money to in the Akhirah. So it's something which I think uh, affects a lot of Muslims today, you know, in terms of uh, this amana, the fact that we don't take this trust, uh, you know, uh, as something important. You know, we borrow money or we take money from others. And it's just something we don't consider a big deal. Whereas, you know, other hadith that we'll mention in the future, inshallah, in the next couple of uh, sections, will show us also the importance of uh, paying off debts as soon as possible. So that's number five, uh, paying off debts, making sure that you pay off debts as soon as you can. Are you guys following? Anybody writing these down? Yeah. Okay, number one. The okay, the shahada, the most important thing, the shahada. Reminding the person to say shahada. Number two, saying good words, good things, positive things. Number three, making the person accept his, accept his fate, so that he, you know, he's more, his heart is more tranquil and he's basically in the right state of mind. Number four, having him in the psychological state where he's between hope and fear, between hope and fear. And number five, paying off debts. Number six is encouraging the person, if he hasn't done so already, to write his will. To write his will. And again, this is something which should be done, obviously, before one's deathbed, because a person may die suddenly. So it's important, especially in this country, to write uh, a will as soon as you can. The Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, is it is not right for a Muslim who has something to bequeath to pass two nights without having it in writing with him so that people know uh, where his wealth will go, where his property will go. Islamically, you can dispose one third of your wealth however you wish on the condition that you write it in a will and two thirds of your 
uh, wealth, two thirds of your, your money is divided according to the Sharia, depending on who you left behind in terms of your loved ones. So this also shows us, brothers and sisters, the importance of writing a will, something which should be done uh, now, basically, today. It should be done as soon as possible uh, because obviously, again, we don't know when death is going to come to us and how it's going to happen and in what situation, where we're going to be, you know, whether we're going to be able to be uh, writing a will on our deathbed. So those are things that should be done at the time of dying, specifically. And uh, I want to mention a few things which sometimes they're done, but there's no real basis in them in Islam for those practices being done. And one of those practices is the practice of reciting a specific surah at the, around the deceased. Anybody know which surah this is? Surah Yasin. Now, there is a hadith which is mentioned about reciting surah Yasin uh, around the deceased or around the person who is dying. Uh, this hadith is found in Sunan Abi Dawud. But this hadith is a weak narration. It's a weak hadith. The scholars, they say that Again, as I mentioned, one of the things that should be done around the deceased is what? Saying good things, saying positive things. And one of the best things you can say is what? The Qur'an, recitation of the Qur'an. So if a person recites Qur'an, there's nothing wrong with this. It's a good thing. The best thing, the greatest thing you can do is recite the Qur'an. Whether it's Surah Yasin or whether it's any other Surah. So no matter what part of the Qur'an you recite, it's going to benefit him, inshallah, because he's hearing the Qur'an. Even the Messenger of Allah, sallam, he would tell Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he would say, recite for me, O Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And so ibn Mas'ud, he would say, you know, uh, recite to you, وَعَلَيْكَ أُنزَلِ And it was revealed to you, O Messenger of Allah. So he would say, I like uh, hearing it. I like others reciting it to me. So nothing wrong with a person hearing the Qur'an and having others recite the Qur'an for the one who's on his deathbed. But specifically Surah Yasin, there's no significance specifically to that. What if the, what if the one on his deathbed asks for Surah Yasin to be recited? What should you do? You should do it. You don't say, well, you know, there's nothing, you shouldn't actually recite Surah Yasin. No, because he's on his, again, as we mentioned, he's on his deathbed. So you recite whatever surah he wants you to recite, whether it's Surah Yasin, whether it's any other surah, because in that situation you want to put him in the right frame of mind, you want to put him in the correct uh, state. Another thing is a practice which uh, uh, I, I've, I've read a few places that uh, uh, some, some individuals do, and that is that the one who is dying should be faced towards the Qibla. Has anybody heard this before? Have you heard this? Yes. Yeah. So... Uh, the one who is dying should be faced towards the Qibla. Uh, this is something which there's no... I haven't come across anything from the Qur'an or the Sunnah to confirm this specific tradition. Okay, so maybe it's a cultural thing, Allahu A'lam, but there's no real basis for it in, uh, in Islam of facing someone towards the Qibla. Yes, when a person is buried, then where possible, and in whatever circumstances uh, allow this to be the case, then he should be facing the Qibla. But in this specific situation, okay, where a person is on his deathbed, there's no basis for uh, making somebody face towards the Qibla uh, while he's dying. Another thing as well is an individual uh, hoping for death. As I mentioned before, sometimes people be become desperate, especially those maybe who have weaker Iman. Maybe they panic, maybe their, their hearts aren't firm in Iman, and so they start to panic, maybe they start to become scared. Uh, and maybe even those who have strong iman, you know, the sakarat al maut, the, the last breaths before a person dies, it's a scary thing. So a person may start to panic, and this is why it's important for a person to console the, the one who's on his deathbed. But a person shouldn't hope for death. The Messenger of Allah, وسلم, when he was uh, with Al Abbas, radiallahu anhu, his uncle, and he was dying, he said, Oh Abbas, don't wish for death. If you were good, and death is delayed, more goodness will be added. And if you are bad, then it's better that your deeds are delayed so you can find fault in your deeds and ask Allah to forgive you. So don't despair because either way, there's no benefit for you. Also, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said that in a situation where a person is dying and the pain is so severe, maybe his circumstances, his situation is so bad that he doesn't feel like he, he can... Uh, 
he can face staying alive or he can bear staying alive because of the pain or whatever the situation may be, then the Messenger of Allah he said that if one wishes to die, then he should say, Allahumma ahyini ma kanat al hayatu khayral li. Oh Allah, give me life so long as life is good for me. Wa tawafani idha kanat al wafatu khayral li. And give me death if death is better for me. So you leave it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But a person himself shouldn't specifically hope and ask for death himself.